Whoa. All right, so let's say your doctor or your nurse that's certified in inserting PICC lines is putting that PICC line into your patient. Well, let's say the doctor is putting that central line into that patient and tethering it through, and all of a sudden, your patient starts having shortness of breath, lightheadedness, and your monitor starts showing a dysrhythmia on the cardiac monitor. What does the nurse think is going on? And I've seen this question a lot in a lot of practice, NCLEX questions. I've even seen it in one of my nursing school tests uh, when I was in nursing school. So what do we do? What is going on? If it is the nurse, the nurse should stop immediately. If it's the doctor, obviously, should stop immediately. What is happening? Well, let me show you here. When you're tethering a PICC line or a central venous catheter into the vein and down through your superior vena cava, you might extend and down and even tickle that right atrium. Now, we know that in the right atrium, you have an SA node. And that SA node stands for sinus atrial node. That SA node is the main battery of the heart. So if we tickle any portion of that atrium, we have a possibility of exciting some cardiac cells and have them firing. If we have that, we have electrical excitability all around the atriums causing your patient to get lightheaded, causing your patient to have shortness of breath, causing dysrhythmias on your cardiac monitor. Okay? Like that kind of, okay? Dysrhythmias. I just made that up anyways, but if you need more help in EKGs, I have a course on that too, so don't worry. But uh, for dysrhythmias, so what's wrong? Your doctor, your nurse, whoever's inserting the PIV, I'm sorry, the, uh, the PICC line or the CVC, should pull the catheter out when they're inserting it, okay? Another great nursing question. You, the nurse, you're measuring the patient's arm. Um, you're measuring how far it's sticking out of the patient's arm. So usually every morning or every shift, we're measuring the length at which the pick line is sticking out of the patient. And it's cool because little pick lines, they have little measuring rods that show you exactly how far it's sticking out. So let's say in the beginning of the shift, it's seven centimeters or whatever. During the middle of the shift, the patient starts complaining of lightheadedness, nauseousness, shortness of breath. And now it's about three centimeters. The pick line has gone in a little bit too much and now is tickling the heart, the atrium. So what does the nurse do? Well, should the nurse pull the pick line out a little bit? <laughs> should the nurse uh, call a rapid response? Should the nurse assess the patient or should the nurse call the doctor? And that's a kind of question that you're probably going to get on a uh, NCLEX uh, type of practice test or even uh, the NCLEX itself. But always, always, always data action response. Data action response. Basically always get an assessment first of the patient then have an action, call the doctor. Do not pull out the pick line because you might cause more harm to the patient than good. So call the doctor, but assess your patient first, make sure your patient is uh, stable and um, don't leave the patient themselves. So one more thing that you have to do with pick lines itself is measure the patient's arm in terms of their circumference. We're measuring the circumference of the patient's arm. Because as we're measuring it, 
we want to make sure that the patient's arm is not inflating, which would indicate that the patient has an infection in that arm, or that the patient's arm is just getting irritated from the pick line itself. So usually before you start the shift, you measure the arm and uh, somewhere at the end of the shift or during shift change, you measure the arm again to see if the patient has, um, uh, has any type of swelling in that arm. And usually it should always be at least half a centimeter or maybe even one centimeter higher, but that's the norm. Cool? So let's go into, uh, let's see here, let's go into TPN and IV fluid therapy here.